here today. So she's out. Izzy, you're going to tell me something. Then Magdalene. Then Josh Lim. And Hiram. <clears throat> Izzy, tell me something about this. Now, what does that help you find? So you get the vertical asymptotes from the denominator. The numerator is actually your x-intercept. And what would make this become 0? Nice job. Negative 1, 2. Great. Magdalene, tell me something else about this. Okay, so then that's going to take us to Josh. Tell me something else. You do. You find that in the denominator, whatever makes that zero. So how would you factor your denominator? don't want that to be zero, so what values of x would make that zero? Um, zero. Okay. And what else? Um, so I'm going to put a vertical asymptote at zero, and then at really left here is your, uh, there we go. Only thing really left here is the y-intercept. What can you tell us about it? If we were to plug in zero, what would be left? Over zero. What happens when you divide by zero? Nothing good, right? No bueno. So I'm going to say, no. Nope. I've got a vertical asymptote at zero. No, yeah, nothing's yeah. going on there. Okay, so now let's look at this. I've got basically there's going to be three pieces here. There's the left, the middle, the right. On the left, is this going to be a down piece or an up piece? You know it's a down piece. How come? You got an x-intercept right there, right? I've got to go through that point. The only way I can do that is by having a down piece like that. Now, if I'm going down on this side, what does that mean is going on on the other side? Up piece. That up piece is going to go through this x-intercept. Hey, is it going to bounce or cross? Was there a multiplicity with that x-intercept? Let's look back at it. No, they're all used. Look, each of them is only used once. So what happens there? Cross. So we make this kind of S curve. If I'm going like that, which means if I'm going down, what's happening on the other side? Going up. Now, another way I know that this right side is up is because there's no x-intercepts over here. There's your graph. How could you check your work? Desmos. Okay, give me a 1 through 5 with how comfortable you're feeling with this. 1 being low, 5 being high. Where are you at? Can't see your hands there. Okay. Awesome. So now, if you are below a 3, what I would recommend is come in after school today and get some help. If you're 3 or higher, I would say just make sure you're doing your homework, staying up to speed with it. What time is it? Do we have time to do a homework problem?
We do. Let's hurry and look at your homework here, okay? Unless you don't want me to do your homework for you. I mean, if you look at this, let me just go through the instructions for each question. Determine the end behavior asymptote, the vertical asymptote, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the domain, and then graph the function. Is that different from what we've been doing? Nope. So let's look at number one here, okay? The equation on this is just 3 over x plus 7. Okay, first off, let's talk about the end behavior asymptote. What is the degree of the numerator? How many x's are there? Zero, so the degree here is zero, and the degree down here is one. Zero is less than one, so what does that tell you about your horizontal asymptote? Y equals zero, good job. Okay, then I'm gonna go to vertical asymptotes. What makes the bottom become zero? Negative seven. So I'm gonna say x, so that's my domain actually, that was one of them. So x cannot be negative 7. Well, since it can't be negative 7, there's a vertical asymptote at negative 7. You with me so far? Is that okay? The x-intercepts are whatever makes the numerator become 0. What if it's a constant? Will that ever be 0? Nope. So what does that tell you about the x-intercepts? There's no x-intercepts. Which, that makes a little bit of sense, but let's just keep going here. I'll talk about that y in a second. Lastly, how do you get the y-intercept? Cover up the x. What is your y-intercept? Y-intercept is 3, 7. So if I were to just, I'm doing this by hand so it's not pretty. I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 7. I'm just going to say, hey, there's negative 7 and a horizontal asymptote at zero. We're going to have a y-intercept of 3, 7, so if that's 1, it's going to be something like that. And that's basically it. How do I figure out if it's positive or negative? I plug in a point. Well, guys, we already plugged in a point at zero, and we got a positive. So that tells me on the right, it's going to look like that. Now look at the vertical asymptote. If it's going up on that side, what is it doing on the other side? Going down. And there's your graph. That wasn't too bad, right? Compared to some of the ones we've been doing, these are a little easy. Now this assignment is meant for the next two days, okay? So I want you to do as much as you can, but you're going to get into some ones you haven't seen yet.